Hello, all you healthy blood pressure warriors. My name is Ingrid, and I want to welcome you to the HealthyBloodPressure.com channel. High blood pressure affects more than 30% of adults worldwide, and that number continues to rise. There are many causes of high blood pressure, but most people with high blood pressure have a common root cause. This root cause is called metabolic syndrome. Let's talk about it in detail and look at a few studies around it. We'll then discuss how to treat metabolic syndrome. So what is metabolic syndrome? Metabolic syndrome is not a disease in itself. It's the name of a group of risk factors that when they appear together, dramatically raise your risk of heart-related conditions. It is of greatest concern when three or more of these risk factors occur together. It also increases the risk of type 2 diabetes and stroke. This group of health conditions contains five indicators. Let's take a look at these in detail. The five indicators of metabolic syndrome. Many people have one or two out of the five indicators, and that's okay. You're not typically diagnosed with metabolic syndrome until you have three or more of them. These indicators are also called risk factors. Number one, high blood sugar. If you go to the doctor and get a fasting blood sugar test and your results are 99 milligrams per deciliter or less, then your blood sugar numbers are normal. Some people have slightly higher levels of fasting blood sugar. The medical term for this condition is pre-diabetes. Their fasting blood sugar level numbers are from 100 to 125 milligrams per deciliter. They don't have diabetes yet but they tend to develop it if they don't make lifestyle changes. If your numbers are 126 milligrams per deciliter or higher on two separate fasting blood sugar tests, then you have diabetes. Remember that these numbers are for the fasting blood sugar test and not the glucose tolerance test, which allows for higher numbers. Number two, low HDL. HDL is the good cholesterol in your blood. It protects against the buildup of fatty blockages in your blood vessels. It also has a wide variety of functions in many of the body's mechanisms. Lower than normal levels of HDL allows the LDL, or bad cholesterol, to deposit on your artery walls and reduce the flow of blood. Low HDL is considered to be less than 40 mg per deciliter in men or less than 50 mg per deciliter in women. These low numbers may increase the risk of heart disease. Number three, high triglycerides. There's another type of fat or lipid found in your blood apart from cholesterol. These are called triglycerides. Triglycerides mainly come from your diet. The body stores extra calories from your food in the form of these fats. It uses them when your body needs energy. Consuming more calories than your body burns leads to high triglyceride levels. Normal triglyceride levels are less than 150 mg per deciliter. The borderline high numbers are between 150 to 199 mg per deciliter, while high triglyceride levels are between 200 to 499 mg per deciliter. Above normal levels may contribute to the thickening of artery walls or the hardening of the arteries. This causes great concern for your heart health and levels above 500 mg per deciliter can cause serious health risk to your pancreas. Number four, large waist size. Obesity in any form is harmful to your overall health, but for metabolic syndrome, scientists consider the factor of central or abdominal obesity. This occurs when there's large amount of fat deposits around your abdomen. This they determine from your waist size. A waist size of 35 inches or 89 centimeters or higher for women belongs to the at-risk category. This number is 40 inches or 102 centimeters or more for men. Number five, high blood pressure. High blood pressure is another risk factor for metabolic syndrome. A normal blood pressure level is less than 130 over 80. So anything above this is a risk factor. High blood pressure is a condition that doctors should treat early. Otherwise, it may cause a heart attack or a stroke. So how does metabolic syndrome affect blood pressure? High blood pressure is one of the five indicators of metabolic syndrome, but it's true even the other way around. That is, metabolic syndrome may cause high blood pressure. 
Let's look at the studies. In 2006, scientists at the University of California looked at a link between high blood pressure and metabolic syndrome. They found that more than 85% of participants who had metabolic syndrome ended up with high blood pressure. This was true for people who had high blood sugar as one of the risk components, but it was true even for those without it. Obesity was a common risk factor in such people. A group of scientists from Japan did another study in 2008. They tried to find out what causes high blood pressure in metabolic syndrome. They found that many factors affect it. These include obesity, blood sugar imbalances, sleep apnea, the malfunction of the renin angiotensin system, and inflammation. Renin is an enzyme produced in the kidneys. It works with aldosterone, which is a hormone made by the adrenal glands, and several other substances. Together they help balance potassium and sodium levels in the blood, along with fluid levels in the body, which affects your blood pressure. And sleep apnea is a condition where breathing stops and starts while you sleep. In 2012, a group of scientists from Spain conducted another study. The study was on rats. The scientists found that many factors affected the function of blood vessels in metabolic syndrome. These include insulin function and the sympathetic nervous system. They also include the lining inside the heart called the endothelium. The fat around the arteries is also a factor. How to treat metabolic syndrome. Here's what you can do to reduce your risk factors of metabolic syndrome. Healthy diet. Eat foods that are high in nutritional value. These include whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and healthy oils. Avoid saturated fats. Limit alcohol to less than two drinks a day for men and one for women. Quit smoking. Physical activity. Regular exercise can help reduce the risk of metabolic syndrome. Try to exercise for at least 30 minutes a day for five days a week. If you have a sedentary job, get up and move around frequently. Increasing your activity level will help to reduce your blood pressure, your weight, and stress. Weight management. A healthy weight is essential to reduce the risk of central obesity. Manage your weight through diet and exercise. Reduce stress and sleep well to control weight. Medication. Sometimes lifestyle changes may not be enough. Doctors may prescribe medications in such scenarios. These drugs may include blood pressure lowering and cholesterol lowering meds. They may also include drugs to control your blood sugar. Your medications depend on which of the five risk factors are prominent for you. And it also depends on any underlying factors. So talk to your doctor and follow their advice to reduce your risk of heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. In conclusion, metabolic syndrome occurs when we develop three or more of these risk factors. The combination of the indicators increases our chances of heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. The good news is that as we become aware of the risk factors, we can work with our doctors and change our habits and increase our chances of a longer and healthier life. If you'd like to start your change today, get our 101 Blood Pressure Lowering Foods ebook. The number one way to lower your blood pressure is to eat healthy. You already know that. So we researched and wrote an ebook to help you do that. It's called 101 Foods to Lower Your Blood Pressure. This ebook contains all kinds of foods that are scientifically proven to lower your blood pressure. And we'd like to give it to you for free. Just go to healthybloodpressure.com and download it. Thank you for watching and have an amazing day.